Today I'm going to talk to you about how to succeed with big data. Well, this was part of a study we did at IBM looking at the future of data. I'll get into that in a little more detail. But the point is to understand that people can take advantage of analytics, big data, in domains that you would not initially think of for business advantage. So big data, people think about big. But in fact, there's a lot of attributes to big data. Traditionally, volume, terabytes to exabytes, just enormous amounts of data. And the challenge of analyzing this, this volume of data is really visualizing it, understanding trends, and, and trying to process it in a reasonable amount of time. So for example, if you have several terabytes of Twitter feeds and you'd like to answer a real-time question like, should I send this person a, a marketing promotion? and I have 10 seconds to do it, I have to process the data quickly. Variety is another interesting aspect of the big data. So not all data is the same. You could imagine, uh, I talked about text data, Twitter feeds, uh, financial data, weather data, um, and the challenge is to put all these different kinds of data together from different sources uh, to answer questions. So for example, if you're a city government and you're trying to manage traffic, you're going to integrate traffic cameras, you're going to integrate uh, weather forecasts, weather data. You might actually integrate uh, some social networking feeds, people talking about accidents, bad traffic, complaining as they do. So then there is velocity. And, um, so sometimes data is not just sitting there. Sometimes it's coming at you very quickly. So if you're a financial house looking to make some very quick trades, take advantage of uh, fluctuations in the market, you have to be able to deal with this data very, very quickly. So it's not about dealing with an enormous amount of data necessarily, it's about dealing with data coming at you very, very quickly. Uh, finally, there's what we call veracity, which is another word for truth. The data is likely inconsistent, ambiguous. In, in fact, um, this notion of veracity or uncertain data is what we feel go is going to be a very important trend. If we look at where we are today, this chart shows the volume of data in the world. And we look at the rate and pace of growth. We see lots of data from sensors and devices, uncertainty there, lots of data from social media. In order to analyze text, analyze social media, you have to interpret what people are saying. There's a lot of subtleties there, voice over IP and enterprise data. And so the rate and pace of growth of uncertain data is increasing dramatically. And to succeed at dealing with big data, you really need to be able to deal with this kind of uncertainty. So let's do a very simple example uh, here. Um, so we have uh, a lady named Jenny in my hometown, San Jose. Um, and her husband is a Real Madrid fan. Surprise. Um, first question, um, what does she want to do? And uh, so we have a, uh, a Twitter feed from her saying her hubby, husband's birthday is tomorrow, looking for a jersey. A couple of things to note there. Number one, it's not actually necessarily completely English. There's a lot of abbreviations, uh, slang. Hubby is an English slang for husband. And so from that, we need to understand she wants to buy a jersey. Real Madrid is understood for her husband, and it's tomorrow. So uh, it's for a man, and we know it's soon. And then we look at uh, people she might interact with online, and uh, you know, lots of uh, what we call influence. And you look for this. In fact, if you're a marketer and you're selling to people, today marketers, in fact, don't sell directly to people. They sell to influencers who do the marketing for them. So the opportunity to identify uh, influencers. Maybe Mark is a, is a big time influencer. And if you can get Mark interested in a product, then his followers will be interested in it as well. Um, and the other challenge is to deal with uh, subtlety, nuance. So Jenny's last comment on the left there, maybe I should just uh, buy some plane tickets and get seats in a match. Uh, you need to understand that that is not necessarily um, what she's going to do, it's what she might wish to do. So differentiating between intent, wishful thinking, humor uh, is a challenge. We looked at um, 
how many uh, tweets a day a company would have to analyze to find something useful. 250 million tweets a day, one useful fact. So obviously this has to scale. And the other point is that uh, this notion of a, a fact base of uh, what your potential customers or customers are thinking about is a business asset and you can use it, you can keep it current, if you can process it quickly enough, you can make business decisions and you can, you can get business advantage out of it. Anyway, back to uh, uh, big data processing. Jenny likely has a mobile phone. Uh, there are a lot of mobile services one can subscribe to nowadays. Uh, one in the United States called Foursquare, which uh, lets you in on marketing promotions if you tell uh, Foursquare who you are, and then Foursquare will have partners with various vendors. So uh, we might know that uh, she's near a shopping mall, shopping center. We already know that she's interested in New Jersey. The next piece here would be to, for vendors who would process these Twitter feeds or even subscribe to a service that does process these Twitter feeds to say, gee, maybe I should um, offer her a deal, maybe she'll come into my store, maybe she'll buy something else. So you see we brought in data from lots of different sources, variety. We've dealt with enormous amounts of data volume. We've dealt with uncertainty, uh, uh, veracity. So what's really interesting about this big data analytics space is a couple of things. So number one, there's a lot of different ideas that are coming together. So if you're a particular company, you're going to want to bring in your private customer data. You might have a VIP or frequent shopper, frequent flyer program. You might want to combine that with public data that you could get. I talked about uh, Twitter feeds, financial data that may be public, billing records. Combining these together in uh, ways very specific to your business, also bringing in syndicated data, for example, lets you answer questions that you might not necessarily be able to uh, answer. The challenge here is dealing with information management, analytics, very specific domains, and there's an emerging uh, skill called the data scientist, and these are people whose job and knowledge it is to, be, to deal with big data, analytics, uh, discovery in uh, domain-specific ways. Now, what really does fascinate me here is we have enormous amounts of data, a lot of it vague and nuanced, yet people want to ask very specific questions. When do I do something? You know, where do I build a, a dam? Um, what kind of promotions do I offer this person? And the, the challenge is that we want to really market to uh, a demographic of size one. You know, the marketer's dream is to sell to the individual. How do we do that? Uh, at, at, because as we tend to get more and more specific, we tend to lose information. If we think about uh, uh, epidemiology example, uh, we might know, for example, how many people are going to get the flu next November in a country. Uh, pick the United States because I live there. If we get more precise and say how many people will get the flu in a particular state, California, we can guess, but uh, we don't have as much certainty. If we narrow it down to how many people will get the flu in San Jose, still more uncertainty. And if we get down to my apartment building and say how many people in Michael's apartment building will get the flu next November, don't know too much. But that's what we're asking to do here. And the way to deal with this uh, notion of marketing to individuals based on uncertain data is to look at a tremendous amount of data from very many different domains in order to ask questions. Big challenge. Um, we at IBM have been in this space for a long time, relatively speaking in this area anyway. Um, and there's a real opportunity for any of you to look at how to use big data for business advantage. Uh, thanks very much. If any of you would like to talk to me or any of my colleagues in IBM Research uh, or IBM in general for more detail here on, on what the art of the possible is, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to talk to you.